So here in this video we will analyze the anatomy and biology of Shin Godzilla, a version of the G-Man that was seen in the 2016 movie of the same name and was made by Toho. Here we will discuss all the organ systems and their evolution in all the four forms including the cellular makeup, its digestive system, its respiratory and nuclear system just to name a few. So let's get to it. Let's start with pre-mutation biology. Godzilla was described as an ancient sea creature that becomes entwined with humanity's nuclear activities. In the 1950s, nuclear waste discarded into the ocean, mainly by the United States, gives rise to this aquatic being, described as a prehistoric marine reptile still alive at that time. Its encounter with radiation triggers an astonishingly rapid and radical process of evolution which spans several decades. This evolution equips the creature with specialized traits including formidable claws and fangs that enabled it to feed on more radioactive material like submerged canisters of nuclear waste. The creature's entire existence unfolds beneath the ocean's surface and after 60 years of evolution, the creature transitions from sea to land, transforming into the colossal and destructive Godzilla. Now let's look at Godzilla, its body design first. The initial form of Godzilla is introduced as an aquatic creature resembling a large and unusual marine animal. In this stage, the first form, he is mostly submerged underwater and moves with a serpentine motion. The second stage marks its transition into land, gaining legs that enable it to crawl on shore, yet its movement remains awkward and unsteady due to its rapid transition and that the entire body hasn't adapted yet uh, to terrestrial environment. He was also bleeding all over, especially from his gills, probably due to the rapid changing organs inside of him. The third form stands more upright, resembling the traditional upright posture of the classic Godzilla. Its limbs are more developed now, allowing it to support its massive frame more effectively. The fourth form is significantly larger and more powerful than the previous ones. It fully embraces the classic Godzilla appearance, with a massive body dorsal placed along its back and an imposing upright posture. So, the first form which would have been the first visible form of Shin Godzilla is fully aquatic, although there could have been numerous other forms in the 60 years of rapid evolution. The second one is somewhat amphibious, trying to survive the atmosphere, sunlight, UV rays and basically a new environment. The third and fourth forms can survive underwater and are also fully terrestrial at the same time. The first form is 14 meters long, then 28 meters tall in the second form, followed by 57 meters in the third form and 118 meters in the fourth and biggest form. The skin texture seems to appear rough and uneven, seeming to look like wounds and clotted blood in the later third and fourth forms while looking a sickly yellow in the second and first forms. Shin Godzilla has digitigrade legs, small hands, a small bulbous head and an overall reptile amphibian appearance and these seems to hold true for all three forms except for the first one. So now let's get to the skeletal system of Shin Godzilla. Since it began as an unknown life form that was mutated and evolved rapidly on the ocean floor, this would mean that the creature would have had either a cartilaginous or calcium based bony skeleton. In a very great artwork, although not canon as it should be its fan art, we can clearly see how the bones and skeletal structure of Shin Godzilla would be if it was ever visible to us. It would have appeared to be saurian with a long serpentine vertebral column that extends from the head to the tail. There would be also a rib cage ending in a large, very enlarged sternum on the chest as well as bones on the dorsal plates. I don't know about you but I'm considering this as canon, at least head canon. And also the bones would be super dense and made out of a different allotrope having a powerful structure for atomic bonds to be able to hold the weight of 92,000 tons as in the fourth form. So after discussing the body design and the skeleton, Let's take a look at what Godzilla is actually made up of, his cells. In the movie after the US dropped bombs on Shin's back, pieces of his flesh splattered all over the ground. And when researchers analyzed, they found that the cells of Shin Godzilla were unlike any other. They were extremophilic cells and they classified Godzilla as a multicellular colony of extremophiles, functioning together as an organism with a central nervous system. These cells are hardy enough to withstand nuclear energy extreme heat and radiation. Extremophiles are organisms that have evolved to live under extreme circumstances and that's what Godzilla is in essence, an entity composed of trillions of hardy cells working in unison to adapt to an ever-changing environment 
also to threats and circumstances. So moving on, he doesn't really have a digestive system per se. Although he still has a mouth, teeth and a crude alimentary canal, he has no need to feed. He would have required those when he was an aquatic reptile, feeding off of radioactive waste but later in the second stage onwards, we never really saw him ingest anything, which shows that the head, mouth and teeth have all stayed in place as either vestigial organs or as defense mechanisms. The latter which holds more truth as Godzilla could bite and chomp on targets, his eyes would be needed to spot threats and lastly his mouth is essential for the atomic breath and the thermal flame to come out of. So funny enough, the mouth has evolved from ingesting, taking food in, to excretion, you know, to breathe the atomic laser. Now what about the respiratory system? Okay, let's take you back to elementary science. Respiration doesn't really mean just breathing in and out. It's taking in a required external material in order to oxidize food and release energy for metabolism. So in the case of Shin Godzilla, he initially was a marine animal, a sea reptile, meaning that he would have been breathing air with lungs. With a radioactive mutation, he gradually stayed underwater and developed gills, which persisted until the later forms. In the second form, his gills were bleeding profusely as it started to adapt to air, a different environment. As the third form emerged, it would seem that the redevelopment of the lungs had been successful, although he did return back to the sea, but that's not because he was unable to breathe properly. It was due to the changing respiratory system that now encompasses the nuclear reaction system in full. He needed water to help his blood cool down his overheating body. And now from that, let's get to the best part. Now let's get to Shin Godzilla's internal nuclear system. This organ system is theorized to be a set of specialized organs within Shin Godzilla's body that are capable of absorbing, storing and utilizing radiation. These organs allow Godzilla to feed on nuclear material including radioactive waste and convert it into energy, which is true as they did mention the early pre-mutated form to be able to eat radioactive waste. This system serves as a unique energy source for Godzilla. It enables the creature to power its various physiological processes, including its rapid regeneration and adaptation. This concept aligns with the film's overarching themes of the consequences of nuclear energy and its impact on the environment. It also likely contributes to Godzilla's remarkable regenerative abilities. Radiation exposure might accelerate tissue repair and regeneration allowing Godzilla to heal rapidly from injuries sustained during battles. So while most multicellular organisms depend on energy released by the breakdown of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, Godzilla relies solely on energy released from fission of an undescribed element or compound. Maybe it's water, maybe it's uranium, maybe it's something else. This nuclear reaction inside his body is a heavily regulated one, as any increase or overdrive would lead to a catastrophic meltdown, as we can see him going back to the water after evolving to the third form. Since he was overheating and needed to cool down, and again after he used the atomic breath as well as the dorsal lasers for defense, he had to become dormant to allow his unique blood to cool down his chain reaction, the chain reaction of the elements inside his body. His blood as well is very peculiar as it does seem to act as a car coolant instead of the normal nutrient delivery mechanism. Also, it was stated that the nuclear reaction inside Godzilla's body generated a new unknown element or an isotope that wasn't in the periodic table. Now let's talk about the other weird parts of this strange Godzilla that isn't present elsewhere. For example, his nuclear organ system, he does have another thing, an energy dissipation system which were his dorsal plates for air cooling and his blood acting as a coolant liquid. Also his tail is very long, super long, which also had dorsal plates lining its top till the end of it, with the end seeming like another head possessing weird facial features and can shoot the laser. And in the end of the movie, it began to sprout out different fifth forms which appeared humanoid and were smaller. Still large relative to us though, 15 meters or 50 feet in height. The tail like the mouth and the dorsal plates can shoot the atomic breath in laser form as well. And interestingly, Godzilla would close his eyes behind a silver nictating membrane when he performs this attack, showing a very complex correlation and integration of the organ systems in his body. It was also stated that Godzilla here probably had a phased array radar method of detecting threats or locations, just like jet fighters or radar stations, as is evident when the drones got shut out instantly when they came near to his dormant body. He displays the remarkable ability to adapt his physical form and attack methods based on his adversaries and momentary needs. The remarkable skill is facilitated by his genetic information 
which far surpasses human genetic complexity by eightfold. Moreover, the acquired compatibilities based on the atomic energy, initially seen as his atomic breath, was very, very peculiar. Even while recharging, Godzilla developed an ESP-like ability functioning as the earlier set phase array radar to fend off nearby threats. These unique attributes showcases Shin Godzilla's exceptional adaptability and versatility, and given enough time, he would have evolved into 6th, the 7th, and the 8th God form as well. So in summary, Shin Godzilla is a fast-evolving multicellular colony creature caused by irradiation of an aquatic reptile. He became a monster with a bony skeleton with hardy extremophile cells, trillions of them, a nuclear organ system that powers his adaptations and needs, his metabolism, and also he has defunct normal organ systems. He can evolve to suit any environment and also to counter any threat and would eventually take over the world. So that's about it. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video on the biology and anatomy of Shin Godzilla. Do hit the like button for support and subscribe. But most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates and new videos here on this channel. Till the next one, take care fam.